My mother used to say, when you are lazy, you end up looking for a man to look after you. And when you do that, you may end up in the wrong hands of the man. Minister Mujangwa, welcome back. Thank you. Um, for me, it has been, like I said uh, last week, as a woman who is at work um, and trying to juggle life, marriage, family, how do you do it? I think women are blessed, blessed by the Lord because they are very multitask. Uh, you know, as a mother, you know what it is, uh, you have to do so much. Uh, I'm not saying... As a woman, you should always be and doing everything in the home. But the truth of the matter is, if you don't organize yourself, then your home will be disastrous. Mm. And I believe women should be strong, should work hard. Laziness is no option. We should never be lazy. My mother used to say, when you are lazy, you end up looking for a man to look after you. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you may end up in the wrong hands of a man. So, but when you are hardworking, you know, partners love people who are hardworking. People, two people who are hardworking, when you bring them together, is the best reunion. Mm. They, they respect each other. And uh, it's actually up to the woman to make sure that the home is clean, to make sure that this man who was brought up by a woman, his clothes are clean. Don't worry about why should I do that for him. Remember, this is natural. It's the mother who carries the baby for nine months. It's the mother who nurses that little 2 kg, 3 kg mm. until they become big men. So that motherly love should always be there. Mm. And share that in your home. I have four boys, so you know what it means. I had to really stand my foot and say, God, give me energy, That's give strange. me power, give me wisdom. Yes. To make sure that I'm always there for them. You know, boys are brought up by mothers. So, well, which, and then they grow, and then they marry. And then when they look at this woman, they're just not looking at a wife. They're expecting that motherly love, which they grew up seeing. Mm. So as women, you need to be, it's, it's a little harsh to say, okay, you need to work harder, but that's the truth. That's the truth. Mm. It's not easy to be a professional woman, at the same time being a mother, when did you find your voice, Minister? When did you find your voice to be able to sit in a meeting and contribute and say, I've earned my right to sit here. I've earned my right, even in the family, mm -hmm. to say what I'm saying or whatever. When did you find that voice? Because I think a lot of women, we are scared. We are scared to be confident. We are scared I mean, to... When you know what you're doing, you're always confident. So whatever you are doing, you need to understand why you're doing it. What is exactly the outcome you want from what you're doing? Mm -hmm. When you know that, even within a family, what is that you want? A family which is united, a family which loves uh, each other, a family which does things for each other. You know, you need to know there is labor of love. The things which you do in a family, which you would initially say, ha, this is too much for me to do. But when you think deep, you actually say, I would do it. It's labor of love. Mm -hmm. I will do this for my sons. They, that will make them better men as they grow up. I will do this for my husband. That will make him love me even more. It's the woman who is the cleverest, I am sorry to say. You need to quickly understand why certain things are happening in a certain manner. And you need to think about going around it and find the best. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we say it's a give and take in a relationship. But I'm sorry, as a woman, sometimes you tend to give a little more than what you take. The you but take. the truth of the matter is, at the end of it all, you are the boss. Whether it's in the home, whether it's a, a, you are a leader. Mm. So you remind me, me of a conversation I had with Janet Manoa, the yes. singer. And we were talking about um, just the fact that if you are a woman in power, there's a time where you need to also respect your spouse and give him mm. the I, I must, I must say, in this home, 
why I have been successful mm. is this support I get from my husband mm. in whatever I do. And his success is my success. My success is his success. Yes. And when I go up, he supports me. When he goes up, he supports me. When I go down, he supports me. When he comes down himself, I support him. It is about ours. It's our. And when I'm doing whatever I'm doing, he is there as a spinal cord for me. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky, not many men. I don't want to appear like I am the only one. Who, but I'm just saying it has come through this relationship building, which started as very young people, as friends. There is much more than La passion for love. You know, when you meet somebody, you admire that person looks beautiful. I really would like to this person to be my husband or my wife. You know, sometimes as you live together, that can disappear. Yes. What should always be important is respect for each other. And friendship. And friendship. Because I hear you, you look at this person, friendship. even if you are mm -hmm. not, uh, if matrimonial duties are no longer being done, but you look at this person and say, I want to support him all the time. If he's sick, I want to look after him. If he's worried, if his mother is not well, I want to go through the pain together with him. Mm -hmm. If his sisters need some help, I need to walk with him and help him and see how we can help his family. Because when you marry a man, it doesn't necessarily mean you're taking that man away from his family. I mean, think about it. You have your own children. I have my four boys. I will forever love them. I always want them to come around me and be like those little boys the way they used to behave. So, and what happens when, as they marry, I am so happy because then I'm getting more. I never, I didn't have daughters, but if I tell you I have two beautiful daughters and I call them daughters in love, not mm. daughters in law. Right. And I embrace them and they are part of my family. And I always want to move together. It doesn't necessarily mean I give people, I dictate to people, even to my children. Neither do I dictate to my husband. I know there are certain things which he wants, which I may not want. I respect them. Mm -hmm. I look at weaknesses and strength. And on those weaknesses which, I, which hit me hard, I work around them. Why, how do we manage conflict, Minister Mchangu, in a marriage? Because I think that's, that's very, that's, that's something that a lot of us probably struggle with. But we're going to take a break and maybe that's where we can come back to. Okay. Just to understand, in a marriage, because you're saying you're a boss at work mm. and then at home you want to be a wife, mm. subservient, etc. Mm. And then there's conflict that happens. How do we maneuver that area? But we'll pick up okay. on our own when we come back. Right. So this is Ian. I'm with Minister Mjangwa, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to EN, and I'm with Minister Monica Mchangwa. So, Minister, we were talking about love, the balance of love, and, you know, how do you, as a powerful woman, balance the two? But I think there is something that, you know, that kind of worries me, this next generation. You talked about cash, car, and all of that. Do you think that the next generation is a, a very materialistic? How do we get them to understand that in a relationship, it's way more than just the, what's in the pocket and that there's a friendship that needs to be built? If we base a relationship only on materials, yes, we want money. Money is important. It makes our children go to school. It makes our children go to universities. But what is important is respect for each other. Mm. In any relationship, not just husband and wife, in a family, it's about respecting each other. It's about respecting, as a politician, it's about respecting the electorate. It's, it's very important to understand that each and everyone was born with some kind of a gift. Mm. Never look down upon anybody because maybe this person didn't pass A level or didn't pass O level or didn't go to university or didn't even have had a chance to go to school. There's always something in each and every human being. Mm. So it starts from respect for each other. Once you respect each other, then you can talk. And I'm not saying my life, my marriage life has been glorious. It has been ups and downs. We've learned as we go. But the truth of the matter, what has kept, kept us going is that relationship and friendship. 
and also to be able to open communication lines to talk about what is bothering you. In life, if you are not able to air out what is really bothering you, if it is not easy to talk to your partner in the house, find somebody else who you can really trust, whether it's a relative or a friend, and it has to be somebody who you can really trust. Yeah. Talk about it and get a second opinion. Most of the time, what is important is to build that loyalty, especially when it comes to husband and wife. Look at my job. I'm hardly at home. Mm. I'm all over the place, whether around the 10 provinces of this country or outside. But it is up to me to build that loyalty so that when my husband, Chris, when he's sitting at home, he says, I know what my wife is doing. I know she's out there doing work. So when we are getting out whatever we are doing, let's be serious what, with what we are doing. As women, as we, we want professional women. We can't leave 52% of this country behind. And I'm saying there are mothers who are single mothers, who I have a lot of respect for. Because when a woman walks out of a marriage, I believe she would have really gone through it and see that she's not getting anywhere. Mm. I don't look down upon women who are moving out and becoming single parents. I think when any, every woman, their wish as they are growing up is to be married, to stay in a marriage. But yes, there are marriages which just don't work. And I don't, I respect those women mm. for those decisions they take. It's not easy. It's not easy to bring up a child as a single mother. It's not easy to bring up, uh, to, to just juggle all these things when you're a single parent. Yeah. And, I, and you know, the love that you're talking about, I must say, we felt it when we came to your house today, Tatambirwa, and uh, with Wamchangwa, with, um, uh, and he, he was on set and he was making, he was trying to make sure that everything is okay for his wife. And I could see that he was really invested in, in this process. And not a lot of men are invested in the lives of their wives. So I think counter is also good. Men should also invest in women yeah. um, because I think it's a two-way street. Parents. Young men also shouldn't just think that because you met this girl one day, you yes. liked her looks, and you this is you are going to leave. You're getting somebody into your life who you are going to live with right. for the rest of your life. Right. You this person was brought up very different from the way you were brought up. It's only good to accept that you are different in certain manners, but you have to embrace those weaknesses and work on them. You embrace the strength and you also embrace the weaknesses because that's how we are. We are human beings. We are brought up differently. We have got different weaknesses. We do things in a certain manner. You know, this I have heard of these fights that, oh, the way he, he's uh, uh, using the toothpaste, I don't like it. Oh, he throws towels all over the place. Or, or We have all seen this. I'm not saying I found a perfect husband. Yes. I, neither am I perfect. I'm not perfect. But I it's about embracing each other's weaknesses and walk through them and build a better future for you. Together. Together. You're a grandparent. Yes. What kind of a grandparent are oh, you? Oh, my God. You don't know. There is something which happens to you, to a mother or a, 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 to a grandmother or a grandfather, which sometimes young, young parents don't understand when grandmothers or grandfathers are all over mm. their, their grandchildren. It, it, it comes within you. Mm. It's so fulfilling. You feel like, yes, my legacy is there now. Mm. This is where I started. I had never, never has given me Paida in Noku. And I look through the grandchildren and I see myself wow. and I see the granddaughter, the granddad. It's such a lovely thing. Mm. It changed my life. Yes, it changed my life. I had a lovely granddaughter. The I best thing know. I could ever ask the Lord for. And uh, of course, God gives and God takes. I'm struggling to go through it. As you can see, she's all over. Yes. She was the best thing I ever had. She loved me with all her heart. We lived day-to-day -day life together. We traveled all over the world together. I always, uh, friends and relatives always comment when they look at the videos and, t and uh, pictures and says, wow, how did you manage to do all this mm -hmm. in just 10 years? Mm -hmm. Because she died at the age of 10 and a half. And I always say, ah, she, it was so fulfilling. There was no holiday for me 
which I would go with Chris without my grandchildren. Yes. I started traveling with them very young. It was very fulfilling. It's always fulfilling. Grandchildren are the best. And I always say to young generation, remember when grandparents are all over your children, they're not taking your children away from you, mm -hmm. but this is their legacy. And, and Minister, um, on behalf of our team at EN, I just want to pay our condolences to you. When we read about the loss of your granddaughter, it touched me personally. Um, and I just couldn't believe. And I also know that you were also one of the first people um, at the site. And it's something that you cannot ever forget. So our sincere condolences, um, Minister. Thank you very much. There's yes. never a day which passes without me thinking of uh, my Paida. And I just want to say, may the Lord just come forward to the whole family, especially the mother yes. and the father and all of us who, who our lives were so entwined. We will continue to lift, lift ourselves up. to the Lord. Thank you, Minister. We're going to take a break and um, we'll be right back with Minister Monica Mchangwa. Welcome back to EN. Minister, we were talking just briefly about your legacy. Yes. What kind of legacy do you want to leave behind at the end of the day? When we sit and when we talk about this incredible woman called Monica Mchangwa, what do you want my us legacy, to What's, What do you want us to talk about? My legacy is to leave a united family, a united clan, a united community, a united Zimbabwe, where Zimbabweans live together well and just where opportunities are given to all. That's what I always dream about. I work hard, whatever job I'm given, I will try my best. I put 150% of my time and I make sure all these things I'm talking about, if it is about my children's, birthdays, and I'm a mother of many other children, from my sisters. I looked after them. I took them to school. So today, I always mother, yes, I had four boys, but I'm a mother of many other mm -hmm. children. And all oh, what I like in my life is to see people living together well. Uh, I don't like fighting. I don't like to see people uh, pulling each other down. I don't like uh, uh, people uh, uh, looking at others as inferior because we're different with our gifts which were given by God. So we should always respect each other, respect the elderly, the youngest. You know, I respect my children. I always give them room. I never choose which schools they should go to after uh, Form 6. They choose their universities. I don't choose which degrees they should take because I think once you give that child that power mm -hmm. to be able to choose what they want. And I'm very grateful to the Lord. They have done well. The four of them have gone through universities. Some have got two degrees, some three. And I'm, I'm grateful to the Lord. I am also saying to the young generation, I know it's very difficult, especially with our, with this biggest problem we have of drugs. Yes. And I've seen a lot of mothers. And true, no mother would claim that all your children, I have always given you peace. In, as a mother, you should be always be able to go through the most difficult times of bringing up children. Mm -hmm. And children will always be children. And they are never perfect. But uh, mothers are supposed to pray hard, to use your knees to pray, to pray prayer. for your children. Yes. You, we need to be prayer warriors for our families, for our children, so that they live well with their wives, their children, so that we can always leave that legacy I talked about. United family, united communities, united Zimbabweans. Wonderful. What does retirement look like for you? At some stage, Minister Mjangwa, for me, I would expect you to relax, to say, ah, my work is done. I'm going to now take some time and just, you know, relax. Do you think you'll ever get to that stage? 
Oh, oh. No, certainly I would like to get to that stage. Mm. I am not young anymore. I mean, I'm talking about joining the struggle in the 70s when I was 15. So if you add up the years, you can know, you can see how old I am. I mean, and I'm saying uh, naturally also the body becomes tired. But I'm only saying as long as I feel strong, I would want to work for the people of this country. Yes. But certainly I look forward, I'm a good farmer, I love farming, I do it with a passion, uh, and I and also just visiting. We have spent a lot of life with my husband, traveling all over, we love traveling, yes. and uh, we want to do that also. And I want to spend even more time with my grandchildren and enjoy them. But uh, I feel when uh, as long as I'm still strong, uh, it's also important to mentor young girls, more young girls, yes. so that as we leave this generation of our of women, we need to leave a generation of women who are stronger, who are prepared to work hard for their country. It's not always for remuneration. Sometimes you give more, like I said, than what you take. And so, yes, I look forward to retirement. Yeah. Yes. And, and I must say that you've paved such an incredible path for a lot of women, and that's something that, you know, we should acknowledge and appreciate of you. Um, a lot of women are now finding it easy to get into ministerial positions because of you being a trailblazer with other women uh, that went with you to the liberation war um, and came back. Uh, I think for us, it is, we have heroes that we can look up to and say, if she could do it, then why can I not do it? And I think that is a part of your legacy. You may not be aware of it, but we look up to you and we're saying, ah, but look at her. She's managing and she's doing all of these things. So maybe there's room for Emily Nimapari to also, you know, do those things I as well. I actually encourage young women. Yeah. Politics, yes. People say politics is dirty, but it's the people who are dirty. Mm -hmm. We are saying we're 52 or more percent of women in this country. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying to my young girls, there's nothing wrong with politics. Mm -hmm. You need to be strong. You need to be correct. You need to continue to be focused and say, this is what I'm here to do. And you do that. Yes, there are some who may say bad things to you. There are some who may try to bring you down, but it's found in life it's when you are a leader. Even in business, mm -hmm. that happens. Mm -hmm. When you're a leader, you have to just take everything in stride. It happens. Some people look down upon you. Some people want to try and bring you down. Some people think, oh, what is he trying to do? But you know what? You keep praying and say, God, continue to give me wisdom to do the right things, to do things which will change people's lives. And I love my women. Mm -hmm. I love young girls. And I would like to do more in terms of just mentoring them. Minister Monica Mchangwa, it has been an honor and a privilege to have you on the EN uh, set. This is now my set. Even though this is your house, this is my set thank today. You. But thank you so much for affording us your time. Um, it has been such an inspirational interview. And I hope that anyone who is watching this, um, number one, understands that if she can do it, you can do it as well. Sure. And, you know, sometimes it just needs us to be a bit courageous um, to start the conversations and to achieve the things that we want to achieve in life. Yes. So it has been my honor. Thank you so much. And we hope to come back again uh, to visit you and just to see how things are going. Thank you very much. Oh, what I want to say is hard work pays. Yes, hard work does pay. Yeah. This is EN. I'm with Minister Monica Mchangwa, and we are sending love and light your way. <laughs>